Joining us now to discuss is SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce. Welcome, Hester. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. All right, so tell me about this safe harbor rule proposal you have. What important update have you made? We've done a couple things. One, tried to enhance the investor protections by adding in um, some regular updates and, and requiring teams to, to update on progress of the project. And then we've also built in some markers so that at the end of the three years, it's, it's a little bit easier for the uh, teams to figure out how to show that they're, they're decentralized. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that we've included, included a requirement to have a block explorer as well, um, which again, we think would be an, it would be a purchaser protection. Good morning, Commissioner Purse. How how would we determine that a network is distributed? It, 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 is it through a Herfin, Herfindahl index? Is it what method are you using to determine that? It didn't seem like it was spelled out in any uh, publication. It is a facts and circumstances based test, of course. But I think some of the things that we point to is ownership of of the the tokens and then voting control. And then how are changes being made in the network to the extent there are changes being made? Um, so it's, you know, it's it's always going to be a facts and circumstances, though. It's, it's, so it's sub, it's subjective, correct? It is. Okay. I wonder There's what some, is the, the state of the current safe harbor rules, and what why does this update matter? The the. Last proposal I put out about a year ago, I got a lot of feedback and I wanted to incorporate that feedback and then put something out. I'm still taking more feedback, so any ideas, um, I, I welcome. But I wanted to put it out just as, as the incoming chairman was coming in um, to say to him, here's an idea of one way to provide regulatory clarity. It's not the only way, um, but I think it would be helpful. And so um, I, I, it's a it's a fresh proposal for him to take into account. Maybe you could spell out how this will help the crypto industry in terms of innovating, creating tokens, and you know not having to be afraid of the regulatory gray area out there. Yeah, the goal is to let people do a token distribution event to start their network, uh, to allow it to be up and running in a form where the public can participate. And to do so without fearing that that's going to be roped into the securities offering rules. Uh, we do include some requirements for disclosures, and those are subject to the anti-fraud rules under the securities laws. But the idea is that then within, aside from that, you'll have maximum freedom to develop your network. So, uh, and so I think that's important for, for networks. So this latest round, this is these are recommendations, or are they actually have they been implemented? Uh, agreed no, upon it's, by it's all the a, other commissioners? No, it's just a recommendation at this point. I'm still trying to get my colleagues on board, and and I think it's an area where our new chairman will have quite a bit of interest in providing regulatory clarity, since he understands the space and has been teaching about it. So I think it's it's a good time for us to. I mean, any, it's overdue, but I think it's it's a it's a new opportunity for us to take a fresh start. Any input from the other commissioners? I have gotten some so far, and I think you know it's it's good. People are asking questions, and that's what I want. I want people to be asking questions, providing input, um, both in the public and and my colleagues. You know, the Wall Street Journal published the editorial board published an article recently saying you know the SEC's cryptocurrency uh, creating a lot of conf Rather, the SEC is creating a lot of confusion around cryptocurrencies. Regulators are harming investors by filing suits before setting clear rules. Uh, I wonder what were your thoughts on things like these uh, th these opinions from the Wall Street Journal? Well, I think that the problem is that so far we've not done a good job at providing clarity. And so we have a real opportunity instead of using um, enforcement actions and no action letters we can really take a proactive step and put out some guidance to say, hey, here's a way that you could do it that achieves our objectives and allows you to achieve your objectives. And I think that's what the industry is looking for. That's what the American public is looking for, more importantly, and, and that's something I hope we can do. 
Good morning. It's so nice to have you back on the show. Um, I'm going to pivot a little bit here topic-wise away from the SEC and ask you about Dogecoin because um, I know you have a really interesting philosophical view of the crypto industry. And this has actually become kind of a philosophical question, right? So here's this coin that was sort of started out as a joke, has sort of infinite supply, um, Does you know, some would argue might not have the strongest fundamentals behind it. And yet it's wildly popular. You know, its market cap hit $50 billion. And there's kind of two schools of thought. There's some people who think this is a great entryway into the crypto world. And there's others that say, no, this is not good because a lot of people are going to get burned and they don't really understand what they're buying. And I'm just curious if you think that the Dogecoin phenomenon and coins like this are good or bad for the crypto industry as a whole. Well, I mean, first, I should say that my views represent my own views, not those of the SEC. And I certainly don't don't represent the views of of, of uh regulators more broadly. And I don't know even that Dogecoin would fit within the SEC's ambit, um, you know, depending on whether or not one would consider purchases, purchases and sales to be securities, purchases and sales. So, um, but look, I think people buy and sell lots of things. And I always give the same advice. You know, you've got to know what you're getting into. If you're getting into it because you think it's fun, that's fine. But understand that you can lose money if you're getting into something um, with the idea of making money over the long term, make sure you're asking lots of questions and, and you know, not just following the crowd. Um, you've got to make your own decisions. I, I, as you said, it's a philosophical issue. I'm a believer in personal responsibility and, um, you know, people take their own, take, take, make their own decisions based on their own research. Or if they're just having fun, they can do that as well. But don't come complaining to the government if you lose your money. Thank you. And another question um, that I don't think I've heard your views on before. So there, China, as we know, has been racing to develop a central bank digital currency. And, you know, there were some reports that people in the Biden administration are starting to pay attention to that and, and worry about that. I, I, is this something that the U.S. should be paying more attention to? Because, you know, one of the one of the potential results of the central bank digital currency is a threat to the supremacy of the U.S. dollar. Yeah, well, I think certainly we have to pay attention to it, but there there are limitations to a Chinese central bank digital currency. There are limitations to any central bank digital currency, but I think especially one um, put out by China. I think any government um, central bank digital currency implies a level of, of concern for privacy. And so there's this alternative, which is stable coins. And I think those many of those are dollar denominated. And so that's, that's, um, if, if we're concerned about that, I think, I think we should, we should welcome these private stable coins. Um, and I frankly think they're just better competitors in the market because they do allow people the ability to transact without having the government watch everything they do. Commissioner Purse, speaking of uh, asset-backed uh, tokens, uh, we have uh, exchanges like FTX and Binance running around trading uh, essentially tokens that represent shares. How does the SEC feel about this? I, that that can't happen in the United States. And so um, if, it, if it were to happen in the United States, that would certainly be an issue of, of concern for the SEC um, as it relates to our securities markets. You know, Commissioner Purse, there is speculation that the U.S. Treasury may take action against money laundering using digital currencies, according to a Bloomberg report. I'm wondering if you could corroborate that speculation. Well, again, that's uh, outside of, of my purview as an SEC regulator. But I think no one should be surprised that the same types of rules are going to apply in the digital asset space, in the crypto space, as they do in the cash space. And so if people are using crypto for illicit purposes, the government is going to pursue that the same way they would with respect to cash. And that's why I think people on both side of, sides of the issue, both the government, which says, well, you know, we're concerned about all these illicit uses, and people who are concerned about the government looking at illicit uses are just ignoring the fact that, you know, when something is illegal, it doesn't matter which tools you use to do it. Um, and, you know, there's, there's no reason to cre treat crypto differently um, because it, like everything else, is used for good things and bad things. All right. Uh, Esther, thank I'm you just so much. wondering if we could just get your really quick take on the significance of the Coinbase listing, which was, you know, one of the biggest, biggest pieces of news in the crypto industry. 
I mean, it was certainly a, a big direct listing and it, it drew a lot of attention from the mainstream media um, to the crypto industry. And I think that it's, it's um, that interest is going to continue as people realize there's, there's real activity going on in this space and, and, and there's a lot of money at stake, you know, without speaking specifically of, of any company, I think it's, it is a signal um, that, that there's a lot of interest and, and so people will go where the money is. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Peirce, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I look forward to seeing what happens with your safe harbor rules proposals. Many best wishes. Thanks for having me. All right, that was SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce.